Hi, Ankin. Thank you for coming here with us in Frankfurt and sharing your journey. Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, Vrinda, absolutely. Um, so I am Ankin Bhakti and I am based out of Nagpur, uh, based out of Calcutta, exactly speaking, but then it's been about, what, 23 years that I've been uh, in this city. And uh, this is where I grew up and spent majority of my childhood. And uh, this is the city wherein I have the fondest memories of uh, my life. And uh, I, I graduated in the year 2017, you know, and uh, I was with uh, GH Raisoni College, uh, which is on Kingsway. I graduated uh, in BCom with computer applications, which is uh, nothing but BCCA. And um, and and I was pretty much inclined towards um, after defense. I was really inclined towards defense, honestly. Uh, but then the second thing that I loved the most uh, was um, IT and uh, computers and all of that, which is why uh, the thought of me choosing uh, BCCA came across. And uh, I, I decided to choose uh, that for computers as well as management to get a subtle idea of that. and. That is how I graduated in the year 2017, ever since I've been working. That's uh, that's about me. And what about where are you working right now? What is your current role like? And what has been your journey in the working times? Right. So I'm working with HCL Technologies at the moment. And I am still um, in the city of Nagpur. And I'm working with HCL Technologies, uh, which is... On, uh, which is in Mehan, and uh, it's been about 3.5 years that I've been working with HCL. And uh, I'm working in cloud uh, technologies. I'm working as a cloud analyst, uh, precisely speaking. And my core responsibilities would circle around uh, us working on cloud, uh, preferably AWS, and uh, also training people as and when the need arises, just to ensure that the people are kept aware about uh, the latest technologies and uh, they are deployable. So I'm a bit into talent transformation as well as cloud uh, technologies for the sake of my project. Awesome. Thank you for letting us know. And uh, I did uh, take a little peek into your LinkedIn profile just to get a little background on you. And it also says that you worked with uh, Amazon before HCL. Right. So what was that about? Right. Right. So Amazon, I mean, after uh, my graduation, I happened... I was actually startled by the fact that uh, I, I wasn't expecting the fact that uh, plus three graduate, since I am a plus three graduate myself, I wasn't expecting um, to get a placement, uh, but then that is exactly where Raisoni startled me, honestly, because uh, Raisoni uh, did get in a lot of placements for me. And uh, I got a chance to appear for five uh, companies, five different companies and uh, I don't even remember all the names right now, but I remember uh, IBM, Daksh, I think Concentrix was one of them. Amazon was one of them. Uh, I also got selected for Indigo and uh, eventually Air India. Uh, a fifth company, I honestly don't remember the name. But then among all these offers that I had, I thought um, Amazon was a big brand and Amazon was an emerging brand. I remember uh, back in my days um, about... That, that is when I started my college in the year 2014 and Amazon was still emerging in India. I thought uh, the brand was huge and the way uh, in three years time, 2014 to 17, the name that Amazon had made was uh, something that intrigued me uh, because they won and they expanded. They won over their customers and they expanded uh, throughout um, in, in a span of three years and, they grow, and the growth was immense. That is something that intrigued me, and uh, I I still remember and can recall the the evening when I got selected for Amazon. It was uh, more like a dream come true. I wanted to work for the organization, uh, which I did. Um, I was working with Amazon Pune, and I did work for them uh, for about uh, eight odd months. After eight months, I finally decided that uh, it was time that I switched to. Um, a strong career which would have been IT for me because IT was indeed my forte and uh, that is exactly why I happened to uh, switch from Amazon but then uh, working at Amazon was absolutely a surreal feeling because it was it was 
great for uh, a fresher to start working at Amazon, get to learn a lot of, uh, meet a lot of people, learn a lot of new things. And all of that did uh, help me grow through my career. Awesome, awesome. It sounds like a journey from a different kind of non-tech role in Amazon and then moving completely into cloud, which is one of the booming technologies in IT right now, right? So what, uh, I understand that you had this all urge to be in IT, but what made you choose cloud as one of your fortes and you know prepare for it so that you're able to transform from a non-tech person or non-tech current role. And um, you know, what gave you that strength to now go and try out different technologies when you're already into the industry? A lot of people, you know, they believe that I'm there, I'm content, I just, you know, I'll just stream through this and I'll be fine. So what gave you that courage then? I would say that it was more about a calculated risk that I was taking. Uh, back then I was leaving a huge brand as that of Amazon. And uh, there were questions from all corners of the society. A lot of people had into question, why are you leaving Amazon? Why are you going for a different company? Because it's such a huge brand that way. But then it's all about, I, I thought that I was pretty young and uh, it was time for me to take uh, some calculated risks, maybe to explore certain things. And there's no, um, I mean, I wouldn't say that there's absolutely no going back to Amazon at any given time um, in the future. I could very well go back to the company if, uh, should they find me uh, deployable. And I think it was more about uh, the way the cloud thing was coming up, I, I wasn't honestly aware about that. I just had heard that there was something called AWS, there was something called Microsoft Azure, and uh, GCP had come up to, uh, that's GCP is Google Cloud Platform, and that had come up to, and I, I really wasn't uh, aware about anything pertaining to cloud. I was more inclined towards SCCM because that caught my attention. I remember after switching to HCL, I started working um, in a track wherein we had deployments to do or OS, um, you know, re-imaging and packaging that we had to do through SCCM. And that is how I got introduced to uh, this uh, term. I mean, the SCCM, which is nothing but System Center Config Manager, which is, uh, again, a Microsoft's product. And uh, I tried exploring things through SCCM and then Azure Active Directory happened. Okay, that happened because uh, it was a mandate for us to get some even knowledge on the, on the Azure Active Directory, which is why, which is what actually compelled me to get in touch with uh, cloud. And then I started exploring um, the little nuances that cloud had to offer. And that is how honestly I got in touch with AWS and I thought, uh, okay, this should be it for me. That is how I started off. And um, just out of curiosity, you know, because you were in Amazon itself, so you might have heard AWS as a tool within Amazon. Did you pick up the training just of AWS and not maybe GCP or Microsoft as your because you were in Amazon and um, you were able to get to the resources quicker? Or was it more like, I know of AWS more than anything, so let's just choose AWS for now? No, I, I cannot really say I would be dishonest if I happen to say that I was aware about AWS and everything. I honestly did not have an idea and I, it was extremely difficult for me to choose, which is why what I did was I, I researched through and I, uh, I searched on the internet uh, to find out which of the cloud services had the major market shares. And uh, back then it was AWS by a whooping uh, margin of 67%, I believe. Uh, which is something that helped me. Obviously, if um, AWS has 67% of market share, uh, it was obvious that uh, the jobs would be a plenty, the demand would be immense um, in this technology. That's the thought process that I had. But then I also knew that Microsoft, um, I wasn't aware about the Azure subscriptions back then, but then I knew that Microsoft would catch up because there are several Windows users all over the globe. And I knew that uh, if they included that one subscription of Azure with Windows, uh, and if they give immense discounts, I think they would be able to capture the market, which is something that is happening even today. 
uh, Microsoft is slowly catching up with Azure. And uh, so I happened to do a Google search. I went through a lot of forums, uh, YouTube videos, and I uh, went through AWS as a whole uh, just to understand what the topics are and what AWS is all about, you know, to get a, a subtle idea about what this was or what would I be stepping into. And that is where uh, AWS caught my attention. After I did not even care uh, about Azure or GCP, I did not even care to uh, go and look for their curriculum uh, to see what all things they would be including. That's how AWS happened. That's great. Actually, I, I don't think I've personally done lots of research myself for something so fixated. You get to know something and then you start digging and digging and that's how you get to it. Right. So now that you had decided you want to go for AWS, did you take up certifications? Did you do courses? Or how was the journey moving from the non-tech role that you're in to the learning curve while you're at a job and then you know upgrading yourself to a place where you're now a cloud engineer and you can be hired as one? So how was that little patch of your journey? The thing was that, um, okay, my tie, before I get into uh, the answer to the question, uh, might I also say that I appeared for AFCAT once I was preparing uh, during my college years. And uh, I remember uh, preparing for AFCAT, which is the uh, Air Force Common Admission Test, and I appeared for it. And then um, I just appeared for it once and I couldn't clear it. I scored 146, I believe, and the cutoff was uh, whoopee. 150, uh, which actually compelled me. I, it actually left me kind of heartbroken. And I thought, uh, okay, uh, if not this, then let's try going to the second last uh, that I have for uh, technology. Uh, right. So even today, I do not have a subscription, uh, sorry, a certification as of now, because I'm still waiting. I enrolled with one of the institutes to uh, get a better understanding of uh, how the certification would work uh, solutions. I'm, I'm getting, a, I'm on the verge of getting certified on uh, solutions architect associate. And uh, I enrolled with a, uh, with a company, uh, a Bangalore based company who, I mean, that company did train me uh, on AWS and I'm on the verge of getting certified right now. But then all this while I was working without a certification, I, I really think and I am of the strong opinion that it's all about the knowledge that you possess. Um, yes, absolutely. A certification does help. If you ask me, um, if you are at a 60 percent, the certification would take you up to a 75 percent. But then the thing was such that I only and only focused on getting and garnering a lot of knowledge um, in these things. And, and HCL has been instrumental. The reason why I spent uh, 3.5 years and counting with HCL is because HCL was instrumental in getting me um, or getting me uh, get in touch with people, the experienced lot. Um, of the industry and I got acquainted to a lot of people who were IT based and uh, who were doing uh, wonders in their careers and that is exactly where I mean when I came to HCL I was uh, relatively new to the market I had absolutely no idea of how things are going to be and how things are how we should be negotiating how we should be dealing with the clients how we should be talking to them how should we be getting in business and all of these things but HCL did play a, a huge role in helping me understand uh, the little things about the market, explore the opportunities more. I today am a much stronger professional because of HCL, I would say. And I, I'm really glad that it just gave me the chance to uh, explore this particular domain as I was working as an analyst. And uh, um, it, it did help me immensely to get an even knowledge. And then uh, today I am finally... I can have companies looking up to me as a pro, uh, as a seasoned professional. Got it. So now that you're ready, you you had the knowledge. What would you suggest? Uh, maybe anybody who's now in that space, you know, the new graduates who are right out of college and who are going to now look for jobs or even internships for that matter, they always uh, you know have this uh, question. What is the right thing to do? Even if I select technology, which is also a big mm -hmm. chunk of uh, difficulty, 
once I select a technology, what is the way to go about it? Do I try to first learn, you know, from here and there, then I take up a certification. And that is when I start applying to uh, jobs or how is the case, you know, what would you suggest them to do as a career path to get into job search? As I started my career, I was uh, confused between a lot of technologies, as I said, SACM being one of them, then there was Active Directory, and uh, someone suggested uh, CCNA to get a CCNA uh, certification done to be a big wig in networking. So I think any fresher who is on the verge of starting something, I think it's wise to not fall for the big names. That's what I would suggest. Uh, let's not fall for the big names. Let's just try to get to know what this, uh, what a technology is all about. If we're talking about Active Directory, what is Active Directory? How does it work? What are the relevant options that we get in Active Directory? What are forests? What are domains? All of these things we need to understand. Similarly, for SCCM, we need to understand the tool. At least try. Um, I would rather suggest that any fresher, any given fresher, try to explore the basics of any technology. Okay, for exactly as I did for AWS, I tried exploring the basics of AWS. And that is when we get to understand uh, if it is catching our knowledge. Because we really do not know if, uh, if, if a technology would be catching our, um, let's say, our attention towards it. Would it be drawing our attention towards it? Would it be helping us in understanding um, the little details that it has to offer? There are a lot of technologies. It's like an ocean, you know. Um, there's big data, there is data science and whatnot. Uh, there are several tools that you can master. And it's really important to dwell down to the basics and uh, understand uh, what the technology is all about. If at all you think uh, that that one technology is drawing your attention, it's trying, it's kind of intriguing to you, I think it's really wise to then settle for the uh, the technology instead of um, instead of really um, trying out a technology on the basis of the big name that it offers. Similarly, uh, as I said, uh, certifications would definitely help, uh, but then only to a certain extent. It is also about how you present yourself in an interview, how you portray yourself as an individual, as a working professional to the big world, I mean, to, to the market, to the industry folks. And trust me, uh, these folks who um, interview us, they, they carry immense experience, which is why it becomes really difficult to fool them. So if we are not genuinely into a technology, if we are not genuinely interested in a technology, it becomes really difficult to crack an interview or crack a job. So my suggestion is that you get to know a technology uh, that is there but also know how to carry yourself, how to portray yourself. I think in this uh, global world wherein we are moving, we are actually inching towards this one culture. Uh, that is the global culture, as we call it. And this global culture has the basic necessity of having English as their uh, global language or uh, the way medium for communication, right? So any given company, it doesn't matter. Uh, even if it's a uh, an Indian company, even if it's a Swedish company, any company would function on this language, on the basis of this one language that is English. Uh, so I would say as much as any candidate should be getting acquainted to the technologies uh, that the world has to offer, I think in, they must really be working on their uh, uh, on this aspect as well to get a good grip on the English language so that, uh, because I have personally observed uh, whenever we appear for an interview, I think if we don't know how to deliver ourselves, um, let's say there's a huge technology that we have. Let's talk about AWS. There is a lot to cover in AWS. Okay. Now, when I go to the interview, I cannot really be left worrying about my English. I cannot really be left behind. I cannot really uh, afford to divert my attention towards justifying myself or towards portraying myself or uh, maybe showing our ideas or giving the notions that we carry. I need to stop thinking about the language um, using which I need to portray myself or I need uh, I need to implement certain things. I should have my own technology. So if someone is in college, I would strongly suggest that they start working on their interpersonal skills 
their um, their their speaking skills i personally was i had enrolled myself in a public speaking club which wasn't toastmasters i would say but it was equivalent to toastmasters and um, raisoni does offer toastmasters too and trust me uh, me enrolling in that public speaking club is actually paying off today is actually paying off by helping me crack these interviews because communication would carry at least 50% of of weightage when you are applying for a job so that's my advice that's great advice thank you so much and i think um, from my experience as well a lot of companies are now looking at uh, a package deal with every candidate and not just a amazing tech person but who cannot handle clients so you have to have that right balance of course technology is your forte and that's very important but it's not like you can be 90% technology and 0% um uh, communicator you have to be able to talk and explain what you've done as a part of your technology work right so i think i completely agree with you on that part so um now that you've given this idea what do you think were maybe one or two challenges that you faced when you were pivoting your career right you were mid 20s and you were you had already been in the industry for a little bit you now know how industry works but now you're moving completely into a new it industry where people might also be looking at you this is a non tech guy coming into a tech world and though you have those skill set of course that is why they hired you but what were maybe a few challenges that you well when we start off um our career i think uh, when i started off um, my career in the it obviously i was coming from a different domain altogether and then i was at the mercy of my coworkers and i think that is exactly where your coworkers come into your rescue um when you sit with a group of people i was the least experienced back then i remember in our project and i was sitting with them it's about how you grow amidst them six months down the line i decided to grow and i grew up i mean i i started growing uh, by understanding the technologies i started growing by absorbing a lot of things i wanted to absorb a, a lot of things that these seniors are into offer so the uh, my then team lead happens to be a good friend of mine a great friend of mine even now uh, even now me we meet the person has left the uh, organization but then even now we meet some mm, some knowledge can only be imparted by your uh, by by the players who are there in the market for a longer period of time than you i think uh, they were absolutely instrumental in departing that knowledge and and ensuring that i absorb the most out of it and then i think it was more about how i wanted to absorb it some people want to learn some people do not have the knack to learn so i think having the knack to learn a thing or learn a technology or learn something is absolutely important it is wise to understand that we shouldn't be asking or we shouldn't be going back to um someone or with the same question twice that's the mentality that i had and when i say a question i would say uh, a technical question whatever they said the first time it was my duty that i captured the most out of it it was my duty that i jotted it down somewhere as need be so that i did not have to walk back to the person to ask for the same resolution or ask for the resolution to the same question ever again it is about how we grew up and uh, what sort of a knack do we really have to uh, to maybe and i i really think if we have that kind of a uh, virtue i think uh, it gets relatively easier for, for us as an individual to uh, maybe uh, obscure a position at a at a greater extent i would say it becomes absolutely important for us to evolve uh, through the markets because there is a lot of comp- competition i i think um, and since we belong to a country with a huge population it becomes absolutely imperative of us to develop ourselves uh, to an extent that we do not really fall back in the competition and that is exactly what i focused on there was this uh, there was this one challenge and then the second challenge was to uh, understand and to learn how to speak to people although i was armed with this language 
i had a fairly good grip on the english language but then i had to learn how to communicate with people how to speak to people and you have to be extremely cautious when you communicate in the corporate one wrong sentence can actually make you lose a deal one uh, wrong sentence can actually earn you a penalty and that is something that no company would like you to do so i think that was another challenge that i faced but then i knew that i had to take it up and i had to grow up um, grow as an individual and uh, i started observing a lot of people to overcome that i started observing how um, how people used to communicate uh, my manager honestly was absolutely instrumental um, he is a very strong professional and he is a very strong individual i he taught me how to uh, write emails how to write strong emails how to write assertive emails how to write defensive emails how to get out of a situation how to handle a client how to deliver presentations and what not i think there's always this one person um, who would be around you who, who would rather be willing to teach you every little thing that you want to learn and some people do appreciate i personally do appreciate people uh, having that sort of an appetite to learn and uh, i i think that is something that's going to be important for you for us to grow up and and for us to grow up into stronger individuals i would say stronger working professionals thank you ankan thank you for sharing your journey of and course. i think it's going to be very helpful for everyone who's new right because these are um, things that as individuals or as working professionals we would have wanted us to know back then but of course um, somebody who's getting out into the industry now would love to know all these tips and tricks from you so thank you so much for taking out the time and talking with us today no problem rinda i'm really glad to be of some help and i wish the future big wicks all the best and i really hope that they shine brighter thank you so much for all your help and all the time you took out for us we're really glad and thankful that you were able to talk with us thank you so much ankan